In this video, I'm going to revise electrolysis for GCSE chemistry. So we'll start with some basics. Electrolysis is the splitting up of a compound using electricity. So an electric current is passed through what's called an electrolyte, which is an electrically conductive substance. And that electrolyte can either be a molten ionic compound or an aqueous solution of an ionic compound. And these work because the ions can move. The ions go to the electrodes and become the neutral element. And what happens is they become discharged, they lose their charge. The negative ions, also known as anions, they move to the anode and they lose electrons, so they're oxidized. So the way I remember that is oxana, so oxidation anode. The positive ions, we call them the cations, they move to the cathode and they get reduced because they gain electrons. So the way I remember that is red cat. So if we have a look at an electrolysis cell now, and this one here would be for molten XY. So we've got the X plus ion and the Y minus ion. I will be looking at aqueous solutions in a couple of slides time. So this ionic compound has been melted, so this is our electrolyte. So you can see here we've got a DC electric current, so a direct electric current. And this terminal here is negative. This one here, the longer line, is the positive terminal. So this electrode here is the cathode, and this electrode here is the anode. So if we start by looking at what happens at the anode, so this negative ion is going to move to the anode and it's going to become discharged. So in other words, it's going to lose its charge. So it does that. We we'll represent this with this. This is called a half equation, which we can see the electrons. The Y minus ion loses its electron. So there it is there and becomes Y without any charge. So that's an oxidation process because we've lost an electron and there's that little way to remember it, or my way to remember it, oxana, oxidation at the anode. The electron that's released goes round the circuit. And it ends up at the cathode where the X plus ion, the positive ion, is going to be attracted to there and it's going to pick these electrons up. So the X plus ion is going to gain an electron and become X. So it's still being discharged. It's losing its charge by gaining the electron now. So remember, red cat reduction takes place at the cathode. So if we start having a look at some actual examples now. So we'll start with the electrolysis of molten lead bromide. So there's the formula PBBr2. So the ions present are going to be the Pb2 plus ion and the bromide ion Br minus. So if we think about what happens at the anode first, so the anode is positively charged, oxidation takes place at the anode, oxana, so the negative ion is going to be attracted to the positive electrode and it's going to become the neutral form of that, which is actually Br2, bromine, the diatomic molecule. So at the anode, oxana, oxidation takes place, bromide ions are discharged to bromine, Br2. So we'll look at the half equation for this now. So essentially, we're going from Br- to Br2. Now this is not balanced at the moment because we've only got one Br on the left, but there's two on the right. So the first thing we're going to do is balance the atoms. So we need a two in front of there. And the other thing to note is that half equations have to balance for charge as well. So at the moment, we've got two minus charge on the left. We've got no charge on the right. So we use electrons to balance the charge. So we need two electrons, two E minus. They need to go on the right. So we've now got two minus charge on left, two minus on the right. So that's totally balanced now. So if we look at the cathode now, 
So that's the negatively charged electrode. Remember, red cat, reduction is going to take place. So the positive PB2 plus ions are going to be attracted to the cathode and be discharged. So they're going to become lead PB. So if we look at the half equation now, we're going from PB2 plus to PB. The atoms balance already. We've got one lead on each side, but the charges don't. We've got two plus on the left. We've got no charge on the right. So we're going to use electrons again to bring this two plus charge down to zero so it matches the charge on the right. So we need to gain two electrons. And just remember, this is a reduction process, so we've got to have the electrons being gained, so before the arrow. So if we look at another example now, it's the extraction of aluminium by electrolysis of something called bauxite, which is the main ore of aluminium, and it has the formula Al2O3. So we're going to electrolyze molten aluminium oxide. The thing to note is that it's dissolved in a substance called cryolite and then melted and that brings the melting point down of the aluminium oxide. And you notice that cryolite actually still contains the aluminium ion. So the ions that we're dealing with are the Al3 plus ion and the O2 minus ion, the oxide ion. So again we'll just look at the anode first and then we'll go to the cathode. So anodes positively charged, so the oxide ions, the negative oxide ions are going to be attracted to the anode and they're going to be discharged and form oxygen, which I'm sure we all know has the formula O2. It exists as this diatomic molecule. So in terms of the half equation, we're going from O2 minus to O2. Well, we've only got one O on the left, but we've got two on the right, O2. So we need a 2 in front of the O2 minus. And now charge wise, we've got 4 minus charge on the left. We've got no charge at all on the right. So we need 4 electrons on the right. So cathode now. So obviously the L3 plus ions are going to be attracted to the negative cathode. Red cat reduction is going to take place, going to gain electrons. So the Al3 plus ions are going to be discharged, lose their charge, and they're going to turn into aluminium. So the beginnings of the half equation looks like that. The atoms balance already, Al one of each on both sides. But we've got 3 plus charge on the left, no charge on the right. So we need to bring that 3 plus charge down to zero by adding, gaining 3 electrons. And another thing to note, the electrodes are made from carbon in this process and the anodes, the positive electrodes, they need to be replaced quite often because the oxygen that's formed would react with the carbon electrode and form carbon dioxide. So they would basically burn away over time. So if we move on to the electrolysis of aqueous solutions now, what we've got to bear in mind is that as well as the ions from the ionic compound, we've also got H plus and OH minus ions from the water. So there's a set of rules that we need to follow. So I'll just go through those and then we'll start looking at some examples. So the rules for the anode, remember the negative ions go to the anode. So now we've got the hydroxide ion present from the water versus the negative non-metal ion. So the rule is, if you've got a halide present, so for example chloride, bromide or iodide, then you're going to get the halogen produced. So for example, if you've got chloride ions present in your ionic compound, you're going to make chlorine at the anode. If there's no halide ion present, then water and oxygen are made from the hydroxide ions from the water. So if we move on to the cathode now, we need to bring in the reactivity series. So you can see that's on the right now. So the rule for the cathode, remember we've got positive ions going to the negative cathode. So we've got the H plus ion from the water versus the positive metal ion. So the rule is if the metal is above hydrogen in the reactivity series, we're going to get hydrogen gas made from those H plus ions from the water. And if the metal is below hydrogen in the reactivity series, 
you get the metal produced instead. The first one we'll look at is the electrolysis of aqueous copper sulfate, so CuSO4 aqueous. So the ions present are going to be the copper 2 plus ion, the sulfate ion, and the H plus new H minus from the water. So if we look at the anode, so that's a positive electrode, the sulfate ion is competing with the hydroxide ion. So the first thing to ask is, have we got halide ions present? No, and so therefore the hydroxide ion is going to be discharged and we're going to get oxygen and water. So if we look at the half equation, so there's the beginnings of it. Hydroxide ions are turning into water and oxygen. So we'll balance the atoms now. So if we put a two in front of the water, that means we've got four hydrogens. Two times that two is four. And two plus two is four oxygens as well. So that means we can just put a four in front of the OH minus ions. So charge wise now, we've got a four minus charge on the left. We've got no charge at all on the right. So we need to make the charges equal on both sides. So we need four electrons on the right. So at the cathode, we've got copper two plus versus hydrogen. Now copper is below hydrogen on the reactivity series. And so therefore we're gonna get copper formed at this cathode. So Cu2 plus is going to be discharged and make Cu. Atoms balance already, but the charge doesn't balance. So we need to bring the 2 plus down to 0 with 2 electrons. So the last slide we'll look at is this one. So this is the electrolysis of aqueous sodium chloride. So the ions present are Na plus, Cl minus, and H plus and OH minus from water. So at the anode, we've got chloride versus hydroxide. Well, chloride's a halide, so we're going to get chlorine formed. So the half equation, Cl minus are turning into Cl2. We need a 2 in front of the Cl minus to get the atoms to balance. And then we need two electrons on the right to get the charge to balance. And then finally, at the cathode, we've got Na plus versus H plus. Sodium is a very reactive metal, so it's above hydrogen in the reactivity series. So we're going to get hydrogen made. So H plus is turning into H2. So two H pluses are going to gain two electrons.